Oh man, awesome cast. Those guys are fantastic. But what if you want to talk about wrestling? Well, we've got you covered. Right here on the Sorgatron Media Network, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It might just be the best show anywhere, ever. Go find out. SorgatronMedia.com Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, it's lights out on the Ladies of Awesome. Uh, we had everybody in the studio. The storm hit, but that's okay. We got some audio for you guys. Uh, and uh, we talked about breastfeeding, Fitbits, and more. Stay tuned. Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. number it is because the internet's out um 155 thank you um we uh were right ready to go with this ladies of mayhem and we'd be visually ladies of awesome ladies, cast. Uh, ladies of oh, it's mayhem again. now oh, because no, look I what happened okay so are you recording over there it says that it's recording okay we'll just set it down and let it go then um we are uh gonna do something different because um we've been sitting here for about 10 minutes we don't know how long the power is gonna be if it pops on then we'll just tack this on the beginning and uh and and, and do something with it, right? So at least sure. you guys will get an audio. There's no reason. We have devices with microphones. This is the future, right? Are you sure it's not the past? I'm not sure anymore. I don't anymore. know how I feel about the future. It's very dark in here. <laughs> it is very dark in here. I it have a hot spot. Do y'all want internet? That's a, <laughs> a lot of internet to be pushing. No, no, are you sure you want to do that to your account? Hold on. Let me turn. Oh, it's not mine. It's for. Put your phone in airplane mode so we don't get any calls or anything so it doesn't screw up our recordings. So, luckily, like, we're sitting here and I did load up all the articles. So, we have them until my laptop dies. Uh, there's a huge, um, holy crap storm going through Pittsburgh right now that hit, like, right at 7 o'clock, right as we were going to start going to get started here. So, we're going to do this. So, this is the Ladies of Awesome cast. Woo! Thankfully, Yay! we collected most of them here in the basement. Now we're just holed up like it's a bunker. Um, and around... we may or may not be showing our boobs, but you guys can't see it. <laughs> Woo! And mine are extra big. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we have with us, uh, introduce yourself so everybody knows your voice. No. It's a uh, boy for the show, Missy. I'm Jen. <laughs> I'm Chris. And for those and, and for those uh, that maybe don't, because well, you were on the show before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. In, in various capacities. Oh, I'm wife of Dab of Tech. There you he, go. He's an occasional guest <laughs> as well. And you're a resident scientist. I'm the resident scientist, yes. Yes, and Chris? I am the lady of Chachi Says. <laughs> <laughs> resident international nerd. But you also do, you, you're doing some video stuff and everything at your, at your job. Well, you're soon to be former job. Yes, so. exactly. So I, I dabble with the tech as well. Mm -hmm. And then Missy finds people that don't want to be found on the internet. Among other things. Among other things. But in the in a lot in the law field and everything like that. That was my first pod camp session I went to. I still have the notes. How to find people <laughs> on the internet with Missy Sword. Back before I knew who Missy Sword was. So um, yeah, so and Cindy was gonna be with us, Cynthia Koloski. Uh, so shout out to Big Big Design if we don't get her on the horn if power doesn't come back. We miss you, Cindy. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, so I guess, you know, we'll kick off, hey, uh, and also, you know, if you want to check this out, uh, we, it, when the power is on, we're live Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can follow us, uh, at AwesomeCast on Twitter, uh, on the Facebook, on the Google Plus, and we're, uh, video, maybe this week, we'll be on, uh, iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, and Stitcher audio forms as well, of course. So, uh, who's got an awesome thing of the week? I know you got something. Who are you pointing at? It's Darkwing. Uh, Missy. Oh, Missy is Darkwing. <laughs> Missy. Okay. I was like, you, you. Well, you have something that was awesome, and then it became not awesome. Yes. Yes, that would that would be my Fitbit. Um, the Flex, actually, because Chris over here has the Fitbit. What what version is that? I think it's the One. Oh, okay. And I liked it. So I went on the website, and the Flex came out, and I pre-ordered it before it was actually available because the feature that I like about that is primarily you can wear it and it is waterproof. So the whole thing is like you have this tracker that you can wear on your wrist the entire time and you can even shower with it and it's not an issue. And Then you don't have to leave it in your locker and worry about it. Yeah, or you don't have to take it off when you're showering at home or you know forget to put it on during the day because it, mm -hmm. it's a pedometer. It, it tracks your footsteps. It tracks your activity throughout the day. 
Um, so yeah, I was, I got it finally after, you know, like six weeks of waiting for it and came in, I had it for a week, Mm -hmm. absolutely loved it. And then it just died. So I contacted the folks at Fitbit and they walked me through some tech stuff and they informed me, I think the day before yesterday that, yep, it was a problem with the Fitbit. They were going to replace it for me. And Mm -hmm. I got the notification in my email today that they are shipping it. Excellent. And I can track it with my little USPS thing now, from the email. It's yay. Now, that did take them a little bit to get you your Fitbit, though. Or get, no, get to you, get back to you. Yeah, because when I put in for the tech support, um, like, they don't have an email or anything. You have to, like, send it either through your – I sent mine through my iPhone. So it actually logged any of the stuff that the Fitbit had connected to my phone at error logs. And it automatically connected them to the email, and it sent an email just – to them that way yeah um but otherwise like through the website i had to actually go in they have this little area specifically for like comments and feedback with tech support so i had to go through that option with it and it was like three or four days before i actually heard back from anybody in general just Mm -hmm. acknowledging that they've a received my stuff and b that they're working on it Uh, but once i did they were actually really responsive and it was kind of cool. So what else, other than the technical <laughs> side, so what else makes this thing cool? And you've been using it too. I have been. Um, I really like it. Apparently, it takes about 10,000 steps a day to be, quote unquote, lightly active. Mm-hmm. Um, turns out I was getting like 3,000 steps a day. So, you know, I'm working on, on upping that number. And it gives you a little flower that grows when you have more activity, at least on mine. Yes, yeah, yours does. Mine, mine doesn't have a display. Mine has little lights that light up. Like I start out at one and as I reach that 10,000 step goal, it then lights up and then it buzzes when I reach my goal. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. See, mine has a little display and I, I like it because, let's see, I'm going to pull it off my bra here. Sorry. Not that this you can see it. This isn't a video cast See, right this now. was video. You don't actually need Thank that. Thank you, Mother oh, Nature. Don't. Yeah, so when I pick it up, well, right now you can see my battery is dying. Um, you can see I've taken 3,604 mm-hmm. steps today. I've climbed two sets of stairs. That's the other thing I really like about this. Um, it calculates how far you've climbed and it doesn't have to be sets of stairs. Uh, last week, I was doing a program at Duquesne University, and if anyone's familiar with Duquesne, the entire freaking campus is uphill. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, like, how it's possible that you're constantly walking uphill on that campus, but you are. Um, and after one day, it said I had climbed the equivalent of 30 sets of stairs. <laughs> so that was pretty cool and explained why my calves really hurt the next day. <laughs> um, it also gives you a distance measurement, so my 3,000 whatever steps have translated to about 1.4 miles. I've burned X number of calories, and I have my little flower, and it grows when I'm more active. Mm. And, it, and it shrinks back down during the day, so it doesn't stay grown. Oh, really? Yes. You have to, like, feed it you with have, energy. Wow. So. Um, now, what, what's that version one. versus yours? You have the Flex. Yeah, I have the Flex. She has the one. I have the one. Now, if Missy's is nice because you can wear it on your wrist, and it's waterproof. Yeah. Mine has, like, a little clip, almost like an old-school beeper. Okay. Um, so I clip mine to my bra, but you can clip it to like your pants or. Okay, so whatever. a little bit different. So this is what I thought was cool. Like we talk about, like you know, I get you know the whole Google Glass thing coming up, and it's like and realize that like you guys are completely embracing the whole wearable technology thing that is like kind of the thing. Yeah, you actually made the comment that I'm doing wearable technology before you are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, but that's really cool, and it's actually and it looks like uh, from you know I know Missy here shows me that you know the interface on her app. Mm-hmm. you know all the time when she's entering stuff and uh it, it's pretty cool that you could do that it syncs up you don't have to think about okay if i do the math what did i do on uh on the readout on this thing at the gym you know it is that even accurate mm-hmm. you know you got this thing it pretty much does everything for you that's really cool yeah and yeah. i love i love that the app you know it will give me my notifications on my phone um you have 1000 steps left to hit your goal mm-hmm. your battery is low <laughs> You know, that sort of thing. Um, And I also like that it will connect to um, my computer via a little USB dongle as well. So, Mm -hmm. Do you have the ARIA scale as well? No. Okay. I have a regular scale that is not technological. Is this those Bluetooth scales? I don't need the internet to know how much I (laughs) weigh. That you can tweet your weight and everything like that? Yeah, they have that. that. But the nice nice thing about the ARIA is that the ARIA, if you step on the scale with ARIA, you can link it to your Fitbit account, Mm -hmm. and it will automatically sync your weight 
to your Fitbit That's account cool. to That's help cool. you That's keep cool. track of your goal. Hmm. So it is kind of cool in that regard. And you have the option to tweet it. It doesn't automatically tweet it. Still, I don't know, putting that info on the, uh, the internet. Now, does, do you put in what you eat throughout the day? Yes. With this thing? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't do that. I know you can, but I don't. I do. Like, I'm, I use a different website. Well, she was already in, you were already doing Daily Burn. Yes. Before, uh, and, and, and registering all that kind of stuff. So you're already kind of in that flow. And that's the thing, is like making a habit out of this kind of thing. Yeah, and it's, again, it's handy because I don't have to sit down at my computer. I can if I want to, mm. but, like, when we're out to a restaurant or something, I can literally just pull my phone out of my pocket and plug it in my phone real quick, see how many calories it's going to be. And, like, if I'm deciding on a menu option... I can look at the menu option and be, oh, that's going to be 600 calories. I don't want to consume 600 calories because that's mm-hmm. going to put me over for the day. So I'll choose something different. And we just need the thing where you take a picture of food and it tells you how many <laughs> calories it is. So now, Jen, you had an awesome thing of the week that's uh, also a little bit of uh, fitness minded here. Oh, the scientific seven minute workout. Yes, you our, our in house oh, scientist. Right. I am the in house scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us science things, Jen. Tell us science Wait, things. my thing. So my page won't load again. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I was sort of drawn to it um, just reading about it because I travel quite a bit for work. And sometimes I am too tired to work out in a hotel gym or mm-hmm. whatever or go for a run or whatnot. Um, and I would much rather just nap or have some wine. Um, <laughs> are outstanding options. So us. if you can be efficient and actually uh, get some good in seven minutes, uh, then, then you know, yay, science. So basically, um, and I did read the article, but now I can't see it on my screen. Oh, I have it here. So um, basically it's a lot of t- old school calisthenic and py- plyometric um, mm-hmm. activity, which is designed to target all major muscle groups. Um, in seven minutes. And we'll have this link in the doc, of course, over at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, just look up the episode oh, and we'll have a link to us. <laughs> no, this is not a touch screen. <laughs> see, see, this is the problem I have. <laughs> now, the problem I have Where's is I set my hat. You just use two fingers. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> two at the same time. Oh, two at this. How does it know I'm using two? It's smart. Because it has. It's like your iPad. I hate that thing. <laughs> I don't know that one where you have to get up on up and down from a chair, like standing on a chair looks pretty yeah. dangerous. So right? actually, and, and that's the other great thing about this is you don't need any extra equipment. equipment. You can do it in a hotel room. You could do it in your living room. And, and for those, like, uh, since we don't have video this oh, week. Oh, there are really cute. We could tweet. I guess we, we could tweet we, a we picture. We could tweet this. Of, we could tweet this. Um, this. Yes. Uh, but most of the stuff, if anything, they, they involve chairs, which you should be able to find a chair yes. uh, uh, anywhere, in a hotel room really. anywhere, right? Yes, so you're gonna there take, are chairs. We're taking a picture of it to, uh, um, to, to And tweet. I can tell you a lot of I work out with a trainer regularly, and I can tell you a lot of this stuff he mm-hmm. makes me do. Anyway, in a gym full of equipment. And, and this is basic stuff that he makes me do on a regular basis. So it must have some value. Um, and it's all pretty easy, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this is a sign of technology and science making our lives better. We only have to work out for seven minutes. Right. That's, so I should put in a disclaimer that I did not actually try it. <laughs> <laughs> what is stuff that your trainer has you do anyway? And see that if it actually does take seven minutes. That's the um, catch, huh? That is Do the you catch. count the time that you actually read through the article to figure out how to do them? I think that's actually. Oh, and it says, okay, so you only have a really short recovery. That's the only thing. So you're only recovering ten seconds between each each interval. That's the top. Um, so you also will get some cardio aspect in there. So instead of running or doing the elliptical or the stair climber or whatever, you get your cardio in with your weight training. So it also will burn more calories Mm -hmm. and rev up your metabolism. Very crossfit. So there's that. Awesome. Awesome. Seven minute workout. Maybe Uh, the next time I'm in a hotel room, I'll try that. We get Cindy back. We get power again. Hopefully we can get hers too. She had something really cool that I want her to explain. She's a little game she's been playing. So, um, what's that? I was going to say, maybe we could have her do her segment separately and then you <laughs> we'll can have, splice her in. Somebody text her, have her like do a video of her awesome thing and we'll splice it in the show. Have her YouTube it to me or something. Chris, make it happen. Make it happen. Mine is a recording device right now. So, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> well, Chris had posted an article that sort of connects with an article that I had too. Okay. Because mine, hold on, what was the I don't title? have these up. I, did, I didn't see them right. before we. 
lost so in I had a title called Nerdy Mold Needs Breaking to Recruit Women into Computer Science. Okay. And then you had one about women as protagonists in video in games. Video games. Mm-hmm. Yes. I did. Those do kind of go together. So there's that. They do. Oh, I and it. I actually have mine. I don't know how this one stayed up, but the other one didn't. But whatever. Yeah, and then my other one kind of goes along with that as well, I suppose. And this is this is an ongoing thing. I mean, uh, even there was an article that uh, was tweeted to me last week about, uh, you know, especially like comic books. There's a lot of there's a huge lack of female, mm-hmm. you know, influence there. Just look at the males and females in comics these days, yeah. right? Um, well, I think comics for the most part, females are portrayed as the damsel in distress. Yeah. Or they wear tiny little strapless bathing suits and have giant knockers. And it's always yes. it's always been aimed at adolescents Did anyway, so I don't think that helps, you know. Um, but video games are definitely something you're, you're seeing. Some more girls go, go into it, mm-hmm. um, but definitely, definitely not. A, I don't know. Every time, every time I turn around, like there's somebody that's like the producer on a game. It, it's it's a girl, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. What is, is that really? Are you guys seeing a shift? I don't know. What was your, your article pertaining to? I'm pulling it up now. Okay. So it basically, the gist of it is, it was on The Guardian. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if anyone's looking for it. And the title is, Why Does the Games Industry Have Such a Problem with Female Protagonists? Um, and then the tagline is, It's a tired cliche that all gamers are male, and it's time manufacturers woke up to the fact that women want to see female characters they can relate to. Um, and the article basically says that short of Lara Croft, there hasn't mm-hmm. really been a, a female game protagonist that hasn't been made specifically for quote unquote a female game that one that's geared specifically towards girls. And even um, with the latest Tomb Raider game, I remember there was a bit of controversy when that came out because uh, there's scenes where she gets like beat up pretty bad. Mm-hmm. So there's like and then anytime you get something, the same argument happened a few like back in February when there was uh, there's a lot of intergender pro wrestling happening, and they're like, and like, okay, the girl got some in the in the in the match, and now we hate women all of a sudden mm-hmm. is what that's supposed to portray, and so we can't really have it both ways, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and I mean, if you're looking at statistics, it says you know, games with female only protagonists received only forty percent of the marketing budget of male led games, actually less than that. So less marketing means fewer mm-hmm. sales, which just means they're not even going to be as popular to begin with. What else can you think about? I remember Mirror's Edge, that didn't really go anywhere. Really cool kind of uh, 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 like parkour kind of game. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it on my iPad. Never played like the console version of it. Yeah, that's um, the only other one that they were So there's Tomb Raider. You can't be a girl yet in uh, Call of Duty that everybody's playing. Oh, my God. Including you two. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but that plays into the military though mm-hmm. right but so now i mean women in combat, maybe they can throw in like so, a female apparently soldier. in the future of 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 army fighting uh there's no women now, at all i i happen to love the fact that it, my call of duty guy is like this big burly bearded guy i mean come on seriously guys <laughs> and you're like hi you know i mean and, <laughs> so and even in the new one the uh call of duty goose ghost goose uh <laughs> ghost that's uh due out this fall um like, okay, I can play as a dog. I can start customizing my character, but I still can't be a girl. I, I'm saying that, you know, yeah. existentially. Oh, we know, you, we know you uh, want to be a girl, yeah, sort of. Yeah. But how sad is it that, you know, the first-person shooters, you're more likely to become a dog than you are to become a female. <laughs> but, you know, it even goes so far as as kids' clothes, which I've been noti- – I have to notice now because mm-hmm. I have a little girl – and I want to know, I start, obviously, from a very early age now, what she gets exposed to and and what's okay. Is it really okay for a little kid to walk around thinking, oh, I'm a queen, I'm a princess. Why why can't she be a truck driver? Even even with toys, buying, buying certain toys, there was, uh, there even this educational toy store I went to, um... I bought a picnic basket of a, like a sandwich and a, I call it a juice can because we don't do soda Fair. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, ice cream cone and watermelon or whatever. But my only choices were that or a purse or a sports bag. Like, so where, where does it stop when it mm-hmm. comes to gender identification in, in anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One well, really. goes back to Legos coming out with the Legos for girls that were pink and purple and the girls kind of 
the girls in the world so, making I mean, that backlash. Is the girl not allowed to like Star Wars and identify with Princess Leia? You know, well, I, mean, I mean, at least there's that option. You know? I mean, yeah. can't can't the girl identify with Luke Skywalker if she wants to? Yeah, true, <laughs> like, true. Yeah, so video games need more female protagonists <laughs> in, in summation. Well, and hopefully, uh, I think there is a push, and I think we talked before. I, I, I think last time we were, you guys were on with Cindy, like the, the discussion was about getting more girls into like the math and the engineering yeah, stuff. STEM in yes. general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I know there is a big run of that. I, mean, I know some stuff with that song we've talked about. Uh, I think the, the people down Assemble uh, mm -hmm. do some stuff with the girls of STEM. Uh, so, I mean, there's efforts out there and we'll see what happens in the next 20 years as those, those, those kids girls get through, age, those yeah. girls get, get through college and everything. There's plenty of great, great programs like the Science Center and everything that push as well. So, um, so you know, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity. We just got to see how it kind of all flushes out. You know, so hopefully someday a girl can be a girl in a first person shooter. That's all I want. <laughs> Instead of like, I can be the like last of us. Like the girl is like the helper person you have to protect, you know, can we just flip them? Yeah. You know? I mean, even going back to the, the beginning of video games, it's Mario saving the princess. Well, there was a, I think we talked about here on the show. Uh, there was one where a dad got into yeah. the ROM. And for Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong, and flipped it so the princess was saving Mario. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, hacked her arm and did whatever so she could play it the other way. Oh, that is awesome. Such a cool dad. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Real cool techie dance and see what happens there. So, um, let's see what else we got here. Um, I see breastfeeding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we're girls, Not of the course. Kind of topics I would have picked for this show, but okay. Well, you know, well, then Cynthia had mentioned, and it's a shame she is not here with us. Um, which I was not aware of because I do not post pictures of myself oh, breastfeeding. Yes. Oh, it was you that mentioned it. Yeah. But then I thought Cynthia probably did. Okay, she anyway. Have. So Chris yeah. mentioned it as well, and she can elaborate, that Facebook apparently will take down your pictures if you post a picture of breastfeeding, um, whether everything is shown mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. um, this is just an article about how breastfed babies, and this was taken from two different studies many, many years ago. Um, so it would be interesting to see now um, if they do this again in the future in this sort of generation. Because there was a period of time, I would say like in the 80s and then 90s, that, that people did not breastfeed their baby. It was not instinctive. Um, everybody went to got, get formula. People were given shots in the hospital to not produce their milk. Um, it just wasn't seen as a benefit as it is now. And almost every hospital now will push breastfeeding first. Um, but anyway, this says that... Um, kids and then as they get to be adults basically have a better ability to climb the social ladder. I don't know how accurate this is. Um, and then not have as much of a, of a decline, um, whether it be in jobs or social status, whatever. Um, but then that is also interesting about Facebook. Yeah. And because I am not ever going to post a picture of myself breastfeeding on Facebook or the internet in general. Um, but I do breastfeed in public and thankfully, I have not had anybody say anything to me about that because I would not be nice about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. No, and I, the only reason I know this is I have a couple of pretty staunch breastfeeding advocates on my Facebook um, mm -hmm. feed, timeline, whatever they're calling it these days. Feed, breastfeeding. I like that. <laughs> on my Facebook breast feed because it's the ladies of asking me asked. <laughs> gross. Anyway. No, not so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, and I have seen sort of people irate and, and whatnot because, um, Facebook has been, has taken down historically. I don't know if they fixed it since, but pictures of mothers breastfeeding. Um, also there was some recent drama where like a, a double mastectomy, um, patient had her photos taken down. So boobs, why are they so offensive? <laughs> That Marcus, should be Marcus the tagline yeah. <laughs> right now. <laughs> nice. Um, well, it was, I mean, and it's one of those things where, you know, who do you think's making the decision at Facebook? A bunch of dudes or programmers, you know? So, oh, I, mean, like I mean, 20 year old dudes who are scared of boobs. But wait, exactly. 20 year old guys like boobs. One would but not think. if they're being functional. No, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Good, good point. Functional boobs are frightening. Is that what you're functional saying? Functional boobs are terrifying and kind of gross. When oh, that's not it. what they're for. Oh, actually, they're. Oh, yeah. no, 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 they're, they're there for me to. Go everything at. I know has been challenged. That baby is in my internet. way. <laughs> Ew. All right. Um, bring it around. 
So social media. So social media. Is scared of boobs. It's, it's scared of boobs. Yeah. It's another takeaway. Uh, speaking of social media, uh, um, if we can bring a little thing around <laughs> to social media, big story this week, and I think it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, Instagram getting the video feeds or video posting or whatever. Have you guys been playing with it or mm -hmm. noticed it in your streams? Here is my opinion. Yes. Meh. Meh. Yeah. I agree. How is it different than Vine, which I also don't use? Gives you an extra couple of seconds. Yeah, you get 15 seconds instead of six. It doesn't yeah. loop. It, it's um, it's owned by Facebook, said Twitter. Uh, oh. it, it, it's uh, it it seems more closer to uh, something that we've joked about before, tout. Which, uh, oh, yeah. You know, Tao. I for, forgot about Tao. Oh, yeah, apparently, everybody except for the WWE apparently has because they posted about a million dollars into them. Um, so I don't ever click those links. That's what I'll say. I don't, yeah. I very rarely even click regular well, Instagram links I think in my Twitter. Yeah, feed. Ever since Twitter took them off of the inline viewing. Yeah. 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 And that kills me that they did that because those are the, one, the pictures I usually want to see because I like Rob posts a lot of them. I post my, a lot of my stuff through Instagram. I see them on things. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, but but then it doesn't even carry over until like TweetDeck or something, you right. know, yeah. uh, or any of the other other uh, uh, you know viewers, which got cut down so greatly, you know, over the last year. Um, and, and it's kind of thing they kind of did it right, right? Because uh, if you don't want to, you don't have to hit play. It doesn't automatically play, right? Right? It's not like an anime GIF kind of thing. And um, I don't know. I think it's a pretty decent platform that you can have a little bit of fun with it. Like I've just been. Doing stuff like, hey, what the heck is this thing? On um, you know when we went out to dinner the other night, that mushroom thing out in fifty. Yes, yeah, so right? you you as a video guy though, I think you get more out of it than the, the average thing. user. And especially now that I'm in this like I want to experiment with everything that has a lens lately. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I don't use my my phone as a camera as much as I do because I keep forgetting that I carry around this HD camera in my pocket. Yeah, I should use the damn thing. You know. No, um, and I I agree with you on that one. The the concern that I have is that. I have a busy schedule. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going through my Twitter feed, mm -hmm. I just kind of scroll through. If somebody has a picture that comes up in the Twitter app, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah. If it's something that I have to go independently out to, I don't click the link because I don't want to take the time for it to load, yeah. then yeah. view it, then yeah. get back into Twitter, and it's and just a that's, pain. that's kind of the fight, isn't it, between like Facebook and Twitter now? Yeah. You know? So, but but you'll see it again, you know, on Facebook. You'll see it, and most people on Twitter are on Facebook, right? I hate Facebook. I do too. Oh, if I have friends living all over the world, if I that know. was my only way to keep in touch with them. I would be so gone from Facebook. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a good question that you know brings up every once in a while. Like, how do you use these things then? Um, like, you know, you said you use Facebook for keeping in touch with the real, like, connection people. I guess, right? Yeah. And to stalk people that are really disliked in high school. <laughs> yeah, that that is definitely a fun feature. I basically <laughs> use it to watch pictures of my friends and their families. So you... friends that aren't on Twitter, basically. Yeah. That that I okay. found the friends uh, aside from my social media group based in Pittsburgh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of my Facebook friends who I've known for years that I've been friends with for a really long time are not on Twitter. So I stay on Facebook so I can at least feel somewhat connected to yeah, that. That makes sense. Um, yeah. I prefer Twitter. I, I don't have an office. I'm not in front of a computer all day. I am mobile constantly. Mm -hmm. So if I have time to sit down at lunch, I scroll through my Twitter feed. I get my news from Twitter. I get the weather from Twitter. I get traffic updates from Twitter. Is there something funny coming on Twitter? Yeah, it's just yeah. so much easier for me is to scroll a, through. Is there a giant uh, inflatable duck coming soon? Right. On Twitter? How I mean, awesome. I mean, that was the no. best day on Twitter to be yeah. watching. Because everybody was reacting to that thing. And those don't know, in Pittsburgh, apparently a giant inflatable duck is going to float down the Allegheny River in a few months. I am so going to get in my kayak and <laughs> and kayak next to the big duck. Ooh, power! Oh, we got power! Don't get, our, don't get, don't get your hopes up oh, yet. Oh, that's bright. Oh, that that is really... 40 minutes later, by the way. Really 40 bright. 40 minutes later. All right. Just in time for the show to be done. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and do it this way. because We might as well. I mean, we're already... We don't know what's yeah. going to happen here. Yeah, we'll get everything booted back up and it I down can, again. I can, I can get a nice picture. You can go outside into the world and find that the apocalypse accept. has happened. That's true. I had it that way and you booted it. <laughs> My Twitter doesn't like the pictures of the seven minute workout because it still hasn't posted. Well, <laughs> well, keep in mind that everybody and their brother's on Twitter because everybody and their brother's out power. Oh, right. That's true. That's true. So, um, so, so meh. All collectively here on Instagram. I don't uh, even have. Yeah. You're a pretty big fan. I don't even have an Instagram on my phone. You don't even do it. Either. Nope. No. <laughs> I, I don't, don't know. Is it on Android? 
I it, didn't even check. It came to Android recently because oh. the iPhone users were all, oh my god, our thing is gone. Yeah, I don't have and it. And now nobody I don't really even have it. Cares. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan. Can we talk about my awesome thing of the week? Of course. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't realize we didn't get to it. I, what was it? Well, do you have other stuff? No, no, I'm good. We want your awesome thing. So my first. awesome thing of the week is, and I just saw Jen's app, which is what reminded me. Oh, Evernote. Right. I downloaded mm-hmm. Evernote That's right. this week. I um, can pull it up for you. Yes. So, and I have loaded it onto my phone, onto my MacBook, onto my tablet, and I am loving it. Um, I, I downloaded it because I'm headed to grad school in the fall, and it seemed like a good place to kind of keep all my notes post, you know, articles for research and all that jazz. So um, I decided I wanted to start testing it out now just to uh, get a feel for it. And I could not be happier at the moment. I'm pretty excited about it. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And I've it's been really u- cool. I've been using it for a while. And are you doing the, pr- the premium or are you just doing the not freebie yet. I'm, ch- I'm testing out the freebie mm-hmm. for now just to get sort of a feel for it and see what I'm going to use it. Now, I, and everybody uses it for different things, of course. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, there's a nice uh, little app called Hello that will take picture of business cards and automatically import that in and connect you to their LinkedIn. Oh, that's fabulous. It, it, I've used it the last couple of times I've met up with some people and it's worked out really well. Um, see, I like how that connects to the LinkedIn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's outstanding. But then that's all my business cards are in there. So, and I tag them like, oh, I met all these people at the Comic Con and say, oh, who was that guy? I can go look them up. Mm-hmm. I've had to do that a couple of times saying, oh, I should hit up that person for an interview or something or, any, or, 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 or some other connection. Um, using it for, uh, I take pictures of all my bills and all my receipts. It goes in there. I don't have these stacks of bills. I'm trying to remember if I paid them or anything. And then when it's bill time, I go into Evernote, pull up, you know, American Water or whatever, and like, oh, what? How much? Okay, boom, boom, boom. I'm done. Right. So it's just kind of cloudified all that stuff. You know? That's outstanding. So yeah, I'm. Um, have you used at all the the recording feature that you can do? I have not because I, it's one of those like. Like, I don't use it for notes mm-hmm. because since I live kind of in Apple, like, I can pull up a notes app on any of my devices. That's how I do my notes with my jobs. That's or if I'm on a phone call. I, I wrote uh, my article for Insert Coin that went up this morning. Like, started it. Like, I had this idea while I was sitting, you know, out, out of a job. And I was like, oh, I got to get this down. Put it down. It's on my phone. It's on my iPad. And I got to finish, polish it off this morning. And it's good to go. You know, I love that. Can I? Oh, I have to type. I can't scribble. <laughs> Do you need to use your stylus? I don't know. I haven't actually played with this yet. Maybe yeah, there's a, there's a ton of features in there that I have not even looked at. You yeah, know? It's, it, it's definitely going to be. It's definitely great for if, if I wasn't in an all Apple world, I would go ever know for note taking for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you have to type. But um, it, 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 people use it for recipes. People use it to organize their notes for books. Like, there's a lot of really cool use cases out there for it. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you can just write. I think you have to type. Yeah, that's one of those apps that I... See, I'm going to be using my laptop for it, but I'm try. pretty excited. Well, I do have a keyboard. Oh, look at you, fancy fancy. <laughs> oh, that this isn't me. The work did this. I think my mom has the same thing. Work did that to your iPad. Work did Man, this to my a thunder. I'm sure you can hear thunder this whole time. So that's <laughs> rolled up. So, uh, well, let's wrap it there. Um, um, uh, since we're all audio, uh, let people know your Twitters and everything. It's Missy, and on Twitter you can find me at Rebellious Flaw. All right. I'm Jen, and on Twitter you can find me at BiosalesJen. Unless you really know me, then you know where else you can find me. <laughs> then you know where to really find me. <laughs> Lots of people are going to I'm, really find you. <laughs> posting breastfeeding pictures on Facebook. I don't that. know. I don't think she would <laughs> none of that. Conversation. I don't um, even have any of those pictures. <laughs> Probably. Um... Who am I? I'm Chris. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Christina Unger, or if you know me really well, you can find me at Chick Chris. Also, do, doing breastfeeding pictures. No. Of <laughs> oh, wait, what? No. What? No. Should, should, should we give a throw in there for Cindy Klosky as well? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Big big design at Cindy Klosky on the Twitters, um, and uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can get a video out of her or something so she can still participate. I feel bad. I feel bad that the internet's just shut off on us. 
Uh, so uh, uh, with that, and I'm at Sorgatron. Uh, check out uh, everything else at uh, SorgatronMedia.com. When we have power, like I said, we're live at t Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern at Live.SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, this is on, uh, you know, you can find us wherever you find us. You can find us uh, where good podcasts and video shows are. Go to iTunes, Roku, Loop TV, YouTube, Stitcher. Uh, hit us up at AwesomeCast, contact at AwesomeCast.com, Facebook, Google+, and uh, let us know your thoughts on breastfeeding on the Internet. <laughs> and why are you so scared of boobs? Why? Why are you so scared of boobs? That means you. You. <laughs> Yeah, because pointing really yeah, does pointing. Really yeah, well pointing. Well, that, that makes the you. voice go. Um, it's acting. Um, guys, uh, thanks. Uh, we have not had an awesome chat room because we had no chat room. Uh, you have been our awesome audience. If this finds itself onto the internet, uh, uh, please have a more awesomer week than we just had. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs>